Hello, I'm Andrew Heimlich, again with the Fire Alban Association for Music Education, also known as FAME. And again, I am one of the endorsed teacher trainers for both First Steps in Music and Conversational Solfege. And in my previous video, I talked about the main components of FAME, which is being tuneful, beatful, and artful. And the focus of this video is to help your students in the tuneful aspect of helping them find their singing voice. When children come to us, normally in kindergarten, uh, they don't, most of them don't know where their head voice is, unless they've done a lot of singing at home. But even when they sing, they're still using their talking voice as singing. And so our job is to revive those, the head voice, uh, the lengthening muscles that are used to the vocal cords to help them find that head voice that we want to use. And there are lots of different um, fun things that you can use to help the child find that singing voice. I'm going to show you some of the ones that I use and that I've learned with Dr. Fire uh, The most uh, fun one that students enjoy is the slide whistle. And there's different slide whistles you're going to get. I would really, if you decide to use a slide whistle, I recommend getting a nice metal one. They're not too expensive. And the first thing you do is explain to the children that this whistle can be copied by their singing voice. So what I do first is I play some patterns for them on the side whistle. And notice I start from high to low. And we want to show that we want to start from high sounds to low sounds to help those lengthening muscles where the head voice is. And I'll do another one of those for the students. And then I will then show them how my singing voice can do the same thing with the slide whistle. Again, notice I'm starting from high to low. And then eventually I go from low to high. Then I ask the students, as a group, to then try to copy what I'm doing. I ask them to actually pretend like they're holding a slide whistle and do those motions so they can feel uh, the, the kinesthetic connection of moving their bodies with their voices. So again, I would play the slide whistle. And they would echo. And I would make another sound. And I would do maybe 10 or 12 of those. It doesn't take very long. And that's all I would do for the first day. The next lesson, I would do it again, bring back the slide whistle. I would make sounds on the whistle. The class would echo. Third lesson, same exact thing. Probably not change much. But then on the maybe the fourth lesson, I would change by asking students to do it in small groups. Maybe based on what they're wearing, if you're wearing red, or if you're wearing blue, or if you have a dog at home. And the focus, the plan, is eventually I want the children to do it alone. As you probably know, and research shows, that most learning takes place when a child does things by themselves. And of course, with young students, you're not going to probably ask them to do things on their own the very first day or second day of class, because they're timid, most of them, and not sure what how school is, and so you, you want to ease into the possibility of asking them to do things alone. Um, eventually, I ask for volunteers, and I just quickly go around the room. Thank you. Thank you. Notice I'm just saying thank you. I'm not saying good job, or try again, or that wasn't very good. Uh, John likes to say the right, uh, any response is the correct response, even if it's no response. When you're with young children, you're just trying to create an environment where they feel welcomed and supported. So with kindergarten students, if they don't sing for you, that's fine, just move on. And what sometimes happens, because you didn't say anything to them, not even saying thank you, at the end of class, they'll come to you and say, hey, I didn't get a turn, and they might open up some more. So fifth lesson, sixth lesson, seventh lesson, eventually I'm asking them just to copy on their own. And then eventually I might ask if there's anyone in the class who would like to volunteer and make their own sound that we can all then copy. So the slide whistle is a great tool to help the child find their singing voice. And you're not going to spend a lot of time this in the, during the class. Maybe again 30, 45 seconds a minute tops. But there's other things you might want to do. Uh, pipe cleaners are great. Or anything where you can make a shape. So I would do it first. And then I would ask the children to take their finger and copy. And you can change the shape of the direction. 
Um, you can also change where it's in the air. And sometimes that even helps kids find their singing voice better. If you have a kid where you go, and they go, but if you go up here, can you make it higher? Then sometimes that might help a child to find their singing voice. Um, again, notice I'm starting down first, going from the lengthening muscles to the shortening muscles, that head voice to the chest voice. So pipe cleaners are fun, along with following some kind of path. Uh, these are John's that you can purchase through GIA Music, but you can make your own uh, pathway cards, as they're called, and you just follow the path that you would demonstrate, model. Modeling is very important. You can flip the card over this way. You can make it go higher. And there's other manipulatives that you can use. Uh, a bean bag, a yarn ball. Woo! And you can do it again as a class. You can do it stand in a circle, uh, socially distanced at this time of year, uh, where you can toss it to the child and you make the sound. Woo! As it travels through space and they should toss it back to you. Woo! A great way for you to assess. Um, and of course, puppets are always fun. Whales. Woo! Ghost puppets, woo! Anything that's going to use your the child's imagination and help them find their singing voice. So just remember to um, be encouraging. Um, don't give any kind of quantitative uh, answers. Good job. Just say thank you. Um, if for some reason you are a male singer and you don't feel comfortable getting your voice that high with a falsetto, uh, research shows that the best model for children or other children. So if you have a student in your classroom who's modeling it correctly, you could ask that child to make a sound and say, hey, let's all try it like this person. Um, that sometimes would be more helpful than you trying, oh, if you're not able to find that up there. So hopefully that will help you help your children find their singing voice.